Field Ecology is a trimester-long class where the 8th grade become different scientists and embark on a 9-day journey to the East Coast and collect ecological data to determine the health of different ecosystems. We woke up early on Wednesday morning to start our 14-hour drive to the Nantahala Outdoor Center near Asheville, North Carolina. We arrived late at night and went to bed in our cabin. Some woke up early Wednesday morning to make breakfast before we embarked on our first site study to Black Balsam Knob. Here is Kate, one of our zoologists, talking about how site studies go. Site studies are when our class goes to different locations and collects data from the environment around us in our science jobs. We're on field we eco, and we're at Black Balsam Nub. Nub. Um, I just broke open a rock to see if it was sedimentary or not, and it was. Uh, use this. We're, we're in the middle of discover, uh, figuring out its hardness right now, and then we're gonna figure out why rocks have luster. So Camille caught a butterfly and we're trying to identify it and figure out what type it is. And we're going to draw it and make observations. And here is some of the work that the cartographers and chemists did. Hey, I'm Theo. I'm a cartographer. My job is to collect, compile, and analyze the data everyone collects at their individual science jobs. All this data is compiled onto one map that I draw during the site study. And we hiked back down the mountain and headed to graveyard fields. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a botanist. Most of what a botanist does is identify plants, but we also find DBH of trees. DBH is diameter breast height, which helps us tell the average size of trees. We also find species richness, which is the number of animals in a certain area. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm a zoologist. We study animals and their behaviors. We often use net to capture the animals. At site studies, we collect data by writing, drawing, and graphing in our journals. I'm Sophie. I'm a digital data collector. What a digital data collector does is they collect the recordings that our class makes and presents them visually through videography and photography. My name is Mia and I am a water chemist. I conduct tests like pH, dissolved oxygen, ammonia, nitrates, and turbidity at each site study. The next morning, we had a big breakfast and embarked on the bus to the Nantahala Outdoor Center drop-off so we could get our lesson on whitewater rafting. Once we were finished with the last details, we got on a bus, got our raft down, and took off. Check out some photos from our experience. After rafting for about 45 minutes, we arrived at Jumping Rock. We got out of our rafts and each climbed up to take a picture. Finally, we all went one or two at a time and jumped off of the rock. The morning after, we headed off on the bus to Fontana Lake. We got off the bus. Half of our class went off in kayaks to the other side of the lake to do a qualitative site study. A qualitative site study is where instead of using our science equipment to do the site study, we wrote down what we saw and observed.
We ate a quick lunch and then started the long drive to Goose Creek. We stopped at Steel Creek Campsite near Morganton, North Carolina. We stayed there overnight before leaving again for Goose Creek. The next day, we finally arrived at Goose Creek State Park. We set up camp and then went down to the water to watch the sunset before eating dinner and going to bed. The next morning, we ate breakfast and then split into two groups. One group went canoeing on the Pamlico Sound and the other group did a drawing activity with KP. After that, we did a site study. I'm Alia, I'm a geologist. And I'm Philip. I'm also a geologist. We take soil samples in the area and find out the texture, the minerals, and the color of the soil. No, we also have to find rocks and determine how their hardness and what type of rock they are, like metamorphic igneous or sedimentary. And we also do streak marks, which we take black or white, like tiles, tile thing, and then like we scratch it against it, and like whatever color it makes is the streak mark color. We woke up the next day, had a quick breakfast, and boarded the bus to Fort Macon. We dispersed to our individual spots on the sand and rocks and took a Zenith journal write. Here is a journal write from Lydia, one of our zoologists. How have I grown? How have I learned? What have I taken away? This trip has truly been my favorite trip. Sitting here, looking at the wild ocean, I realize not what I've learned, but how much I have learned. I've learned to love the environment I am in and adapt to it. Throughout this trip, I have been studying ways in which animals have adapted to their environments. I then realized that I've learned how to do the same as well. We transition to new places every day on Field Eco. You always learn to embrace it. On Field Eco, each place is different, as well as each opportunity. I have learned that in life, it's all about transitions. As a zoologist, I have learned ways in which animals adapt to their environment. They learn to survive no matter where they are. Our classes learn to take care of situations at hand and love the beautiful opportunities this trip has to offer. North Carolina has been one of the most gorgeous places I've ever seen. I wish that I could live here. So many times on this trip, I have had to pause and say, wow, this is really real. Everything here is so gorgeous, at times that it almost feels fake. Overall, the lessons I have learned, I hope stay with me, as well as all the memories. After we were finished with the site study, the teachers decided that since it was a yellow flag, we should stay away from the water for a bit. So we hiked down to the salt marsh to take qualitative observations. We hiked back and played in the ocean to wash off the mud for around 30 minutes and headed back to the campsite. Then after the busy day, we drove to the sanitary fish market and had a delicious meal. We got back on the bus and got back to the campsite at 10 p.m. We immediately went to bed. That morning, we had a quick breakfast and fast pack up and started our long journey back home. After an extremely long ride, we got to a state park and slept in a pavilion. We got there at 12.30 p.m. and got to bed at 1 a.m. in the morning. We then woke up the next day, had another breakfast of oatmeal and granola, and headed on our final home stretch.
And lastly, a big thank you to all the teachers that set up our journey to the East Coast and helped to guide us along the way. We are so grateful for all of your generosity.